All right, so today's class, we are looking at topic seven, which is machines throughout history. So we'll start by talking about the steam engine. So fuel such as coal or wood is burned to heat water in a boiler outside the engine. The water will change to steam and will drive the engine. So the water in the boiler turns to steam, which will then turn the gears, which will then move the wheel. So here um, in this image, it's a simple image, um, just showing a piston, the cylinder and a rod. Um, so what we know is that warm air rises and so Thomas Savory, based on that, um, he was he was able to develop the first practical steam engine in 1699. So he expanded on his understanding and he used steam to perform tasks such as moving this piston. So this here, this piston, it's a, it's a movable disc or platform. It fits inside this closed cylinder. So when the piston moves, it causes this attached rod to move as well. And then this rod is attached to another part of the end machine, such as a crankshaft in an engine. So the expansion of a liquid to extreme temperatures turns it to a gas that can then be used to do work and to drive machines, such as the steam engine. So for example, if 100 milliliters of water is boiled into steam at 100 degrees Celsius, at atmospheric pressure, it would expand to about 170,000 milliliters. So when you convert liquid water into a gas, the volume increases to 1,700 times its original volume. Um, if you then heat the steam to 200 degrees Celsius, the volume would continue to increase to more than 200,000 milliliters, or more than or 2,000 times its original uh, volume. All right, so that, that can be then used to do the work. So here in steamboats, they were an important means of transportation in Canada. Um, so basically what's happening is under, under high pressure, steam will flow into the right side of the cylinder. Um, the steam expands, it'll push the piston to the left. And at the same time, there's an exhaust valve um, on the left side, which will open. It'll allow the old cool steam to escape. Then the exhaust valve switches to the right side. Steam will then enter the left side. It'll push the piston to the right side in the cylinder. And that will repeat itself again and again. The piston will keep moving back and forth. Um, and then that piston, the rod here, is attached to gears and levers, which will then um, do the work. In a steamboat, the gears will turn a paddle wheel that will push against the water, it'll propel the boat forward. Um, here in the huge ships, um, steam is not driving pistons up and down. Instead, the steam is turning these large turbines. Uh, so these turbines, it's a rotary engine, which uses um, the motion of a fluid to convert it into mechanical energy. Okay, so there's a number of fan blades, um, attached to a central hub and the blades will rotate when steam, when steam moves past them at a high speed. Um, the, ste the spinning turbine is attached to an axle that will then turn giant propellers. Those propell propellers will then drive um, the ship through the water. Um, turbines also used in jet engines. They turn shafts that operate many machines. Turbines also provide electricity. So in thermoelectric generating stations, when, we, when coal is burned, it is used to heat water to turn it to steam. Um, in other cases, nuclear rea reactors will heat the water um, to turn it to steam. Um, and then in other cases, turbines are powered by moving water to generate hydroelectric power, which you see in dams. Um, next, we'll talk about internal combustion. So improving the steam engine led to the development of the internal combustion engine. Um, the combustion, which is the burning of fuel, occurs internally inside an engine, 
There's no external furnace boiler or water needed. Um, the fuel or gasoline is burned right inside the cylinders. Okay, so crankshaft. This is a shaft shown here. It turns or it's turned by a crank. It will then turn the wheels of an automobile. So I do have a video showing this, but the first step, step A, is the intake stroke. So the piston moves down the cylinder. It'll draw in a fuel-air mixture, which is droplets of gas mixed with air. So next is a compression stroke. The piston moves up, and that fuel-air mixture now is compressed into a small space. Next is the power stroke. So there here we have a spark plug. Um, when the piston is almost at the top, a spark from the spark plug, that will ignite the mixture. Hot gases will then expand. It will force that piston down. Energy will then get transferred from the piston to the wheels of the automobile. And then lastly is the exhaust stroke. The piston um, will move up again. It'll compress and push out the waste products that are left over from burning um, this fuel-air mixture. Um, some of the earliest internal combustion engines were developed for use in aircraft. Steam engines were used in early cars, but they were too heavy and cumbersome for aircraft. So earliest, they were used for um, aircraft. Um, here, we're just looking at how um, how we collected water has changed over time. So water screw, a well, a pump, and now we see our faucet. So timelines like this can be drawn for many um, mechanical devices that we use today. All right, so I have a few videos here to show on um, steam engines, internal combustion engines, um, and a car engine working. So I'm just going to pause here.